How do you get data out of Kafka using Python? We've already done the video that puts the data in. This is going to be the one that reads it back out again. So we'll go through it step by step. It's not that hard, but there are a couple of subtleties which we'll discuss. Uh, I always like to go completely from scratch on these things, so there's no sleight of hand. So let's create a new directory called read from Kafka. Go into it and set up a virtual environment, uh, vm env. This is going to isolate the libraries we need into one easy place. Um, and I only actually need one library for this task. It's Quick Streams, which is my Kafka Python library of choice for this video. With that all set up, let's edit a main script. And from that Quick Streams library, let's import the application object. That's the top level of this library. You'll pretty much use it first to do anything with Quick Streams. And you need to create an app with it and configure it. The first couple of parameters are the same as the producer video. If you saw that, which you don't need to have done, but there's a link in the description. First, we need to tell it, where do you find Kafka on the network? For development, I am running it locally on 1992. The second, since it's development time, I'm going to set my log level to debug, so I get some extra debugging info. And the third, for reading, you need to set what's called a consumer group. Consumer groups get really interesting when you're doing things like high availability and load balancing, and I think they're beyond the scope of this video. For now, we'll just say it can be any unique string, something that makes sense for this specific application. So I'm going to be reading some weather data, so I'm going to call it weather reader. But you could call it my first consumer if you're so inclined. Right, that's an app set up. Next step is to ask that app for a consumer, which is Kafka parlance for a read-only connection. Now, like a lot of connection-y objects, it has a life cycle where you create it, you use it, and then you release it carefully. And the right way to handle that kind of thing in Python provided your library authors support it, and they should, is with syntax. You say with app.getConsumer as consumer. That gives you a block where consumer is bound to the thing we want, and it will be created and tidied up neatly for us automatically afterwards. My children think they live in a world where things are automatically tidied up after them. They don't, but we do, because computers are better than real life. OK, with that consumer, you tell it which topics you're interested in. Consumer.subscribe to, I only have one topic. It's always going to be a string, a list of strings, and mine is called Weather Data Demo. If you saw the producer video, you know that's full of JSON stuff. If you didn't, it's full of JSON stuff. It's fine. OK, so subscribe to that. Once we've told Kafka which topics we're interested in, we can go into a reading loop. And I'll say, while true, tell that consumer to go and look for a new message. Poll for a new message, and I'll give you one second to get some information. And that should come back, hopefully, with a new message that's just been added to the topic. And then I think for this, we're going to use the debugger. I'm going to stick a breakpoint in. I am a bit of a one for using print line debugging, but just for once, I'm going to use the actual Python debugger. Let's create a new terminal, and I'll make sure that that's got the Python environment. And then I can run Python 3 on my main script, and we'll see what we get. So it's connecting to Kafka, it's assigning the right topic, and it's paused. If I list the code, what this is saying is I've really paused here, and I'm just about to go back into the loop and execute this. So that's where we've stopped, just before the while. If I pretty print the local variables, I should see what's going on. We've got some internal stuff. We've got our variable set up. And we've got a message of none. So this message here has come back none, which makes sense. That's exactly what I've asked for. I've said to the consumer, go and try and get me a message. You have one second to return. And it's returned saying, there's nothing new to read yet. Fair enough. So this code, the first thing it's going to need to do is handle if message is none. And I think I'll just print a sort of I'm waiting for new data message. Else, what else could it be? Why don't we continue our debugging session with C? 
and we'll go back round the loop. As fast as that was, it has gone back round, and we should have a new message. Yeah, there you go. So, pretty print the message. It doesn't have a great to string version, but there's something there. So this time we've gone and new messages have arrived, so there's something we can read. Let's call the dir function on that. Python's built in. It's a weird name, dir, but if you think of it as an object as like a dictionary, and a dictionary is like a directory, that's why it's called dir. Um, it just is. We'll live, we'll learn to live with it. So we have some properties, we have some internal stuff. We have potentially an error. Let's have a look at that. PP message.error is a function. And actually most of the properties on the message are a function. So let's call that. And it's none. Good. I didn't want an error, but I do have to handle the fact that I might get one. So I'm going to add into my code here. Uh, if message is none, print waiting, elif message.error is not none. I think I'll just raise it as an exception for this. Um, I will just raise message.error and on we go. And this right here should put us at our happy point. So what are we going to do with that? Let's have a look at a few of these things. So pretty print message.key is a byte string containing the word London. And message.value is a byte string containing some JSON. Let's have a look at message.topic. Unsurprisingly, that's weather data demo. That's what I expected it to be. I'm just showing you that because you can subscribe to multiple topics. And if you do, this is how you know which topic that particular message came from. Right. I almost have everything I want. There's one other property I want to look at, which is offset, which is a number. We're going to talk about that in a second. But for now, let's pull these three things out. So key is message.key. That's a byte string. So let's decode it as UTF-8. Value is message.value. And that's JSON. So why don't I do JSON.load as a string, which I know handles byte strings. Uh, import JSON. And then the offset was message.offset. And with those in play, I can pretty print a nice message. Let's just put offset in there, key and value. And I can run that and connect into Kafka, waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, there we go. I've got my offset, which I'm going to talk to you about in a second. I've got the key. And the value, which was a JSON string, is now a Python dictionary, which I can manipulate however I feel. Let me stop that. I'm just going to handle that keyboard interrupt because it's bothering me. Let me do this properly. Um, let me stick this whole thing in as a main function, like that. Then I can do the standard Python preamble. If double underscore name is the double underscore main, it's a tongue twister to say it, let alone type it while you're saying it, then call the main function. And then I can wrap that in a try block and say, accept keyboard interrupt pass. And that, if I now run it, I can exit cleanly. OK, I feel better about that. And that is pretty much the code. And we could stop there. We could stop there. That's a working Kafka Python reader. And if that's all you need, link to the source code in the description. Please leave a like on your way out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for the next one. But I'm not going to leave it there because there's one other thing I feel like I should explain and demonstrate before we're done, which is offset management. If I go back to this running script and I kill it off, it says here the last record, the last message I processed was offset 20,164. What does that mean? If you think of Kafka topics as being like log files, and they are very much like log files, then as you're reading through the log file, 20,164 was kind of the line number we got to in that log file before we stopped reading. If I rerun this script, where in the log file will I start reading from? Will I start reading at 20,165? 
will I jump to the end and just see the new stuff and be at 22,000 or whatever? Or will I go back in time? Will I go right to the top of the file and read from zero and get all 20,000 odd messages? It depends. It depends on what I want the script to do. So we best know how to get those behaviors out. So let me go up here and start reconfiguring the application. When you connect to Kafka, you tell it your consumer group. When you ask to subscribe to a topic, it says, do I have any record of this consumer group reading this topic? And if so, what offset did they get to? What line number did they reach? If there's no record of that, then it's going to look at a parameter called auto offset reset, which is not my favorite parameter name in the world, but I'm not going to split hairs on it. If that's set to earliest, then it will say, OK, new read from the earliest. I will start at offset zero and you'll get the entire history of that topic, which is what you want if you're writing something that is doing auditing and reprocesses every message for auditing purposes. If I set it to latest, it will ignore all the old messages and just start from the new stuff, which is probably what you want when you're bringing on a new sending out email system. You don't want to go back over the past three years worth of notification and spam your users. You'll just start from the latest, right? So those are those two behaviors. What if I want to jump back in at the point I left off when I stopped or when I crashed or when I was upgraded? For that, you need to participate. You need to tell Kafka, I've got message 20,164. I've processed it. Make a note that that's how far I got in the topic. If you do that, then whatever reason you come down for, when you come back up, Kafka will know that you've made a bookmark in the topic. Probably easier to show you than to explain it, actually. If I just say consumer.store offsets for that message, that's saying, keep a note, I've done that one. Don't show me that one again, show me the one straight after it. If I save that and then run it, we're going to see both of those behaviors. I've never told Kafka to track my progress. So the first time I connect now, it's going to go from whatever the latest is. But now I've just told it, I've dealt with 20222. So it's going to remember that fact. Now, if I kill it off, the last conversation I had with Kafka is, I've dealt with 20223. Now, when I connect, it will know that fact and it will pick up of 20224. And I'll get any messages from there that came in in the meantime. So I should see a flurry of messages that have come in while I've been talking. And then I get to process each one of them. And that's exactly what I do see. Good. So let's step back and recap. I've got this code up here, which is all about how do I connect to Kafka and which topics am I interested in reading from? And then I've got this code down here, which is all about doing the read and processing the data. And mixed in with that is a little bit of configuration and a little bit of code for tracking my progress. If I'm a first time reader, where do I want to start from? And how far through have I got? Because I might crash or be upgraded or for some reason need to reconnect. And I might want to pick up exactly where I left off. Between those three pieces, that's it for readers. The next video we'll do will be stream processing, which is a very spicy topic. And we'll save it for its own video. If you want to catch that, hit subscribe. It's coming soon. If you found this useful, please leave a like or maybe share it with a friend. I will put the source code on GitHub and there'll be a link to that in the description. But for now, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.